All right, welcome back to Velshi. I want to get right to our next guest, Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff of California. He's a senior member of the House Judiciary Committee. He's a former member of the January 6th Committee. He's the, he was the lead impeachment manager during President Donald Trump's first impeachment in 2020. And he's been a leading voice uh, against, uh, uh, well, been a leading voice on a lot of things. Uh, I want to introduce uh, uh, Representative Schiff. Good to see you, sir. Thank you for being with us this morning. Good to see you. Let's, we have a lot to get through. Uh, the first is that we are waiting to hear about what's happening with this Manhattan uh, grand jury investigation. We know that uh, Michael Cohen is, is going to speak to the grand jury tomorrow. He's met with the Manhattan DA many times. Uh, people are wondering whether something will happen, but it's not the shoe that everybody's waiting to see drop with respect to, to uh, Donald Trump. They're more interested in the January 6th stuff, the, uh, the, the Georgia um, election conversations, uh, maybe even the documents. What's your sense of where we are in the accountability of Donald Trump? Yeah, I, first of all, you know, in light of your last story, I want to, uh, you know, send my thoughts out to my fellow Californians who are underwater right now and want to make sure they get all the help that they need to rebuild. Um, in terms of where we are in holding Donald Trump uh, and his enablers accountable, uh, Ali, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, this hush money scheme uh, is important, but the most important uh, is his role in trying to stop the transfer of power and the violent insurrection uh, in a multiple lines of effort to overturn our election. Uh, you know, I take my hat off to the Manhattan DA finally for moving on on what he's moving on. Uh, it does beg a question, though, Ali, of why the Justice Department never moved on this. They prosecuted Michael Cohen uh, in a scheme that the indictment uh, said involved an individual number one mm -hmm. who coordinated and directed that hush money scheme. Uh, they said Michael Cohen had to go to jail for his role in that. Uh, so what's the argument that the guy who directed and coordinated the scheme gets a pass? So if Manhattan goes forward, it will beg the question why the Justice Department didn't. Uh, and, you know, the broader question is, why has the Justice Department taken so long with respect to January 6th? Why was Congress able to move with more, uh, more speed uh, and more thoroughness uh, in terms of investigating the former president's misconduct? Uh, I hope we're going to see some changes there. Uh, it does look like the special counsel in the January 6th investigation is nearing the end of that investigation, at least judging by the high-level witnesses he's trying to bring in. But they were very slow to get to this point. Yeah, and I, I look, I guess there are differences in the in, in an impeachment procedure and in the January 6th committee and in the, 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 the way evidence is gathered and, and cross examinations. But the January 6th committee did do a lot of work on this. The impeachment did do a lot of work on this. And, and I guess a number of people are saying we understand we don't want this to feel political because Donald Trump makes everything political all the time. But the clock is ticking. Donald Trump is at the moment a presidential candidate. Donald Trump still has a lot of supporters. And last week he declared himself everyone's justice and, and retribution, whatever that means. You're absolutely right, uh, Ali. It's a different process in Congress, uh, but generally that process is so much slower than the Justice Department. Uh, for example, when we tried to enforce our subpoenas to bring in witnesses in the January 6th investigation, we couldn't enforce them ourselves. We had to go to the Justice Department to enforce them for us, uh, and they only proceeded with two of the four we referred. When you basically tell the Justice Department, as opposed to Congress, you're not showing up, uh, you're going to jail. So they can enforce their subpoenas with much greater speed and effectiveness than we can. So the differences between the, the Congress and the Justice Department is they should have been able to move a lot faster than us. Um, but uh, but again, we'll, we'll see where that takes us now. Uh, I do think that uh, we ought to be learning fairly soon what decisions they're making. Uh, and you're right, uh, they need to avoid any political perception uh, to the maximum degree possible. But if they give a kind of de facto immunity to the former president because they want to even avoid any appearance of impropriety, then they are being political. They're giving uh, the president to pass. They're not following what the attorney general promised at the outset of the investigation, which is that they would follow the evidence wherever it leads because the evidence has led to Donald Trump. Uh, what do you think is likely to happen? Uh, where is this justice likely to come from the most? I know we're walk watching Jack Smith and, and, and watching what the attorney general does, but there is a completely separate investigation going on in Georgia that we've getting dribs and drabs out of that looked like at least um, uh, indictments may be recommended for some people. Is that going to be meaningful? I think Georgia could be very meaningful. Uh, and the Georgia district attorney 
uh, you know, has a lot of guts, has a lot of courage, and moved, I think, with very, uh, you know, very thorough, with a very thorough investigation. Um, I chose to uh, to conduct the January 6th hearing around Georgia, uh, and brought in uh, Brad Raffensperger and others to testify, Shea Moss and others, because to me, in that case, that line of effort to overturn the election where you have Donald Trump on the phone with the Secretary of State demanding 11,780 votes that don't exist, making fraud claims that his own attorney general had told him were BS. Um, you don't have to wonder what did the president know and when did he know it. He's on the phone. You can hear his voice. That's very powerful and damning evidence. Uh, so uh, we'll see whether what the grand jury uh, four person in the investigative group, Gator Brand Grand Jury, was alluding to whether that was correct or not. Um, and I would hope that uh, that the new grand jury, a uh, criminal grand jury, would be able to use summaries of the evidence presented to the investigative one and not have to repeat all that work uh, so that we can get to justice. Because, uh, as we know, ultimately, when justice is denied uh, for too long, when it's delayed for too long, it, it ends up being denied. What about um, what happened last weekend? Uh, Donald Trump had said, in 2016, I declared I am your voice. Today, I add, I am your warrior. I am your justice. And for those who've been wronged and betrayed, I am your retribution. This is a guy who says a lot of outlandish things a lot of the time, and most of us have gotten used to it. This one stood out to me as, as reminiscent of, of things people said you know, uh, that things that Mussolini said when he described himself as the Avenger. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, Trump has always kind of modeled himself after other autocrats. Uh, he didn't uh, invent the attack on the press as the enemy of the people, but he gave it uh, extraordinary amplification, and then he was imitated by other autocrats. Uh, this is also Donald Trump doing what he does best, sadly, tragically, and that is play the victim. Uh, and appeal to people's sense of victimhood. Uh, and, uh, you know, this, you know, uh, this person who was born rich, born with every advantage, uh, is nonetheless uh, seeming to claim uh, invariably that he's the biggest victim, uh, victim of the, gov the government, victim of uh, everybody else, victim of imagined uh, wrongs committed against him. Uh, and he is trying to appeal to others uh, who also feel a sense of aggrievement. Now, others that he's trying to appeal to, um, many are struggling around the country uh, yeah. and feeling great economic, economic hardship, and we need to meet that economic hardship. But uh, having an autocrat like Donald Trump is certainly not the answer. Representative Schiff, good to see you. As always, thank you for joining us. Democratic Representative Adam Schiff of California.